Good morning, gang. Happy Sunday morning. Okay, here we go. Well, it's starting to seem like the public, I don't know how, how you even want to describe this, uh, is starting to realize that, ooh, we're in trouble. You know, <laughs> funny, funny, because I don't know how long have conservatives been saying that. Bank of America came out Friday in an interview with their chief economist and said, expect at least two to three years for us to get inflation in check. Hmm. I'm hoping closer to two once we can get the idiot out of the White House. Kind of rein some of this stupid spending in. I have hope that we have a do-nothing Congress for the next two years, at least not wasting money. But see, that's not in their plans. You know, and I'm going to give you this. Everybody talks about CBDC and, oh, we're going to go to digital currency because the government needs to figure out something. Basically, it's an, it's an escape hatch. Okay. Oh, my God, we've screwed up the economy so badly we need to completely just throw our hands up and go, we got to start all over. You know, kind of like when you're six years old and the game gets out of hand and you go, okay, you're ahead of me 52 to 1, let's just start over. Okay, that's about what we're run by as six-year-olds, at least on the left, a lot of the right too. Because this is the deal, and this is why they don't worry about getting inflation under control. If the entire U.S. population is broke, then the entire U.S. population goes, you know what, yeah, let's start all over. Let's put us at all at zero, and we'll, we'll start all over again. But we'll implement the same policies, and we'll do the same stupid stuff over. Einstein's definition of insanity. Okay. The ones under that policy that are going to get screwed are the people who have saved money, you know, created any sort of life for themselves or whatever, because all the gimme, gimme, gimme people are going to go, sure, let's start all over. It's the only thing that makes sense. All the people who have worked their ass off are going to go, no, I worked my ass off. The fact you screwed it up, you go work your ass up off and catch up to me. Again, you have politicians, the government that wants a race to the bottom, and those of us <clears throat> libertarians, I guess, want to bring everybody up. Okay, they just they want to bring us all down to their level. We'd like to see people work their way up to ours. Okay, that's kind of where I look at it because they're operating under that famous principle that was established under the first term of the Joe Obama administration. Uh, back in 2008, too big to fail, right? Okay, The government, the Democrats, want to create a government that is too big to fail, a world government that is too big to fail. Just like Pan Am Airways, Lehman Brothers, Kmart, Woolworths, Sears, you know, all those that were too big to fail, okay? You know, Chrysler in the in the 80s, okay, if it wasn't for government handouts and Lee Iacocca saving the company, you know, GM in, in the mid-2000s, too big to fail. Pick an airline, okay, how many times have they gone bankrupt and had to be bailed out by the government, right? Which isn't bailed out for the government, it's bailed out by you and me, because, again, remember, the government doesn't do anything to generate revenue. They just take it from us. But this, this is the scenario that we're going to find ourselves in, is they think they are too big to fail. We all know that's a fallacy. That is not true. It is not possible. Anything can drop. Anything can fail. Okay. There's only one entity in the history of the world that is not a failure, and that is Christ. All right. Everything else has a beginning, a middle, and an end, you know empires, companies, families, whatever it would be. 
you, you never get to the point of too big to fail. So where does that leave us? You know, and again, so many times we talk about prepping as into any sort of scenario. But what we really never think of is what we're trying to do is get out of it, okay? Come through to the other side. And and I'm just as guilty as this as many other channels as we talk about, okay, when this happens, what are we going to do? You know, day one, what are we going to do? Day two, you can pick up, get online and look. What are you going to do? Day one, day two, day three, week one, week two, week three of an SHTF situation. You know, and don't get me wrong, that's very important. You can't get to week three unless you get through week one. But what nobody seems to realize is there is a exit door. We eventually will come out of this, whether, you know, how, however bad Joe Obama wants to make this economy. We'll get through this. There's no question, okay? He will eventually be gone, even though I guess now he's even closer to announcing his next run, and unless they cheat again, I mean, he has no chance in hell of winning. Even one third of Democrat, only one third of Democrats want him to run. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, who will, who will the deep state select this time? So, how do we come out? You know, I'd say the haves and the have-nots, but that that's a lot of what this country is right now. It's the people that have busted their ass and got to where they are, and the people who haven't done shit and said, you need to give me what you busted your ass for. Okay? And I'm sorry, it just ain't happening. If, if I see you working towards something, anybody, I'm not talking about you guys in particular, I'm saying, if I see somebody making an effort to do it, and I have the ability to help, I'm going to help, okay? If I see somebody who's not willing to try, work, do whatever, I'm sorry, you can rot on the side of the road. Tough. I don't care, all right? Bust your ass, put the effort in, and if I can help you, I'll help you, okay? Again, if I can help you. I can't help everybody, you know, like I was talking to my daughter yesterday, you know, I'm sorry, one person can't save the world. And not that I'm even anything like that, but I can try to help my community, not the world. I can't, I mean, I can help people in my community. That's it. But that's where I think we go to. And y'all know I am very pro-balkanization of this country. I think we are too far gone, okay? California, Washington, Oregon, too liberal. I mean, too many handouts, too many, their morals, their personality traits are just contrary to most of the rest of the country. New England, good chunk up there too. In the cities, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, again, you're taking coastal Washington, coastal Oregon, coastal California, and cutting that off. Eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, eastern California, they're probably moving along with the rest of us. Same thing when you get up to New England. I mean, if you want to take coastal Massachusetts, coastal New York, you know, that whole area of the Northeast, now New York's not New England, they're going to wind up on their own. And they're going to wind up starving and dying, okay? Because there's such a concentration of people, they can't do anything, all right? What are you going to do? Turn Central Park in New York into a garden to feed everybody in New York City? Good luck, okay? It ain't going to be big enough. I hate to tell you this as much as some people think, oh, yeah, we've got all this green space. We can do this. We can feed everybody in New York off of planting a garden in New York, in Central Park. Yes, I've seen people say that. Delusional. Okay. But it's going to come down to small. Too big to fail is a complete lie. Too big will fail. Small will be what gets us out the other end. We'll send us through the exit door. Tight-knit communities working together, helping each other. That's, that's where the future is. 
you know, the, the, the way the world changed for the good, I won't say this, with pe people being able to travel. I mean, you go back a generation or two, two certainly, and people didn't really move, you know. Your family was all from Cheyenne, Wyoming, and everybody stayed in Cheyenne, Wyoming. You know, your family was all from Biloxi, Mississippi, and y'all stayed in Biloxi, Mississippi. I mean, a bunch of you can probably tell me stories about, you know, your family lives all in the same town. I mean, you could go hit everybody's house on Christmas Eve, no problem. And then there's other people, you know, like my family, okay? We're Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, here. Uh, you know, we're scattered to the four winds. That will eventually come back because, well, migration all over the country for people was a good thing. Eventually, what's going to happen is people are going to realize they need community more than they need anything else. And community is not a landmass. Community is the people in it. You know, you need to think of that. Like I said, the United States is not 50, 50 states. The United States is defined by the people who live here. Unfortunately, we could take out the united part because we haven't been united in this country for at least 15, if not 30, 40 years. Okay. Don't care. People, we don't. And that's, that's the reason that everything will split. Eventually, you know, the government wants to be too big to fail. Klaus Schwab wants the world government to be too big to fail. By definition, they will fail. And we have to come out the other end. That's the other thing that you need to be looking for. How do I get through their folly of insanity, that all you know, these wishes they have? But how are we going to get out the other side. Digging a hole and saying, I don't want to do this, just bury me is not the answer. Hard work is. It's just a matter of who will do it, us, and who won't, liberals, right? Enjoy Sunday. Come on out.